Hello everyone, how's it going? So today I got my nephew's PlayStation 3, this is the model and what's happening with this one? It has the yellow light of death so I did a few of these already on the channel but this one I will take a different approach and I will now use the Syscon evaluation tool to assess exactly what is going on with this console. I'll show you how to do that As I have opened a few of these and uh, on the channel, so I'll pass directly to the motherboard part of the repair. As you can see, the thermal paste is very dry and it's very important to mention the model of the chip to do this Syscon evaluation thing. This is the chip. This is important because uh, this specific motherboard uses the CXR chip. There are other models that use the SW. This is written on the chip, so check that before you uh, connect it. So here we are already connecting our device to the Syscon connections on the motherboard. We have three connections that we need to do, which is the TX, RX and Ground. So a lot of this video was edited because my head was in front of it all the time. So um, it is very important here that the wires they don't connect to each other so that they do a um, good connection and no shorts as you can see this is my little setup as I don't have any laptop that has windows I had to use my desktop and put it sideways in order to connect the uh, device to the USB. As you can see there, TX, D, R, X, D and ground. So this is the TX, RX and ground that you need to connect to the motherboard. I will then leave a link with the types of motherboard and the connections you need to do. To do the Syscon reading, what we have to do is run the script, which I will also leave a link on from where I took it, and then you just need to turn the console on, leave it with the red light, don't press the power button on the console itself, then choose which is the door that you have the USB connected, this you can check on the system preferences on Windows, and once you have that just to put the on this case of this specific motherboard you need to connect the little yellow wire to ground after you turn it on so that it will do the reading after all that is done you just press uh, the uh, go button it will give you an error then you select the authorize this will tell the computer that he needs to connect to the syscon once you have the green phrase saying authorization successful you click grab codes once that is done you will have the codes sometimes this will freeze a lot and will take a lot of time to remove the codes from the console if it takes more than five to ten minutes just close the program and run the debug version so that you can see which errors are on the back I'll show you that in a minute
so here is a close-up and as you can see it's frozen on number one on the first error so we will do need to run the debug version of this program in order to see exactly what codes are we getting on the background this is then the debug where you can see what's happening behind the scenes so the code that is generating is the A80-1002 this code specifically the 1002 refers to the NAC tokens that are probably damaged so we will need to replace them with tantalum capacitors in order for the console to reboot again this is basically the reason why we need to do a syscon reading because we need to know exactly what's going on with the console in order not to do just a random change of tokens and then it's not the tokens it's something else in this case it is the tokens so the method I use to remove the neck tokens I use a little exact blade in order to take out the uh, little cover that it has on top I will show you why I'm doing this now so you can see exactly what is wrong with the neck token and why is it not working so the neck token it acts as a filter to the voltage that goes into the main chips and once you remove this little cover from it you'll see the reason why it stopped working because it's all burned out so no filtering is being done too much voltages pass on to the GPU or CPU or whichever this is controlling and then the console does not start in order to remove these you just put the blade below it and pull it up and that's the easiest possible way if you use heat everything will melt and it will be a big big mess so if you do it like this it's much much easier With this done, we apply a little bit of flux to remove the remains of the old solder that we have still here. So we apply a little bit of leaded solder just to remove the old unleaded solder. We mix them together and then we wick them away so that it is easier to remove. With that done, let's thin the tantalum capacitors in order to put them in place. So I'm using three 470 microfarad tantalum capacitors because the neck token normally has 1200 microfarad and these three together they do 1410 which is more than enough to cover for the filtrage of this capacitor so with the tantalum stint we are now going to place them on top of where the neck token was and we need to make sure to put the little stripe to the out 
of the uh, base of the neck token so basically which is positive on the outside negative on the inside So with this done, let's then clean with some isopropyl alcohol and the toothbrush in order for us then to test it to see if it will work or not. So let's then place our power supply on to try and see if we manage to fix this one or not. In case your power supply is a metal one, make sure to put something below in order not to do any short circuits on the board. Let's now test it. We turn it on, have the red light, and now it's still on. So the neck tokens, they worked perfect. So this happened because I did not turn on the fan, so it overheated. So I will save you the cleaning of the shell because it's always the same. So let's just clean the chips and put new thermal paste. Let's just add some thermal pads here because uh, these were destroyed with the age and the heat and all that. So everyone's favorite part, which is the thermal paste.
So let's place a bit of thermal pads on top of the neck tokens just to make sure they spread out the heat and do not connect directly with the um, cover. With the console fully assembled, let's then test it and see how it goes. So we have a picture. We are into the XMB. So the console is uh, overheating, the fan is starting to fire up, so it means that we probably will need to delete the console. So this means that we need to remove the top covers of the chips and change the thermal paste under them. So the work was not in vain, but let's test it again just to make sure. But yeah, this is definitely, definitely a delete that we need to do. So, well, this is it for today. I'll do another video on this one very soon. So, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Have a good one. Bye bye.